Hey there, welcome to our foundational movements warm up. We'll take a short amount of time to cover the body head to toe, activating both neuromuscularly as well as getting dynamic range of motion stretches, maybe a short hold into the stretch to help you loosen up um, through range of motion in the joints and soft tissues, but also to prime the body ready for a little bit more activity or higher intensity uh, exercise after this. The only thing that you're gonna need today for a little bit of fun at the end of our warm-up, we'll be doing a little hand-eye coordination training. So if you have a tennis ball, uh, even a golf ball, something lying around, something softer that you, lying around that you can grab a hold of, we're going to use that. Preferably something bouncy. You'll need a, you'll need a rubber ball. I've got just something uh, out of the toy section here, a foam rubber ball. That's what we're going to need for today. Let's get started in our standing posture. Standing posture is a stacked alignment, both from the front view and the lateral view. From here, we're gonna start with some very base movements, some very foundational movements. I want you to take it nice and slow here. We're gonna work our way from the head down. Make sure your head is stacked over your shoulders. And we're gonna start with rotation of the neck, rotation of the cervical vertebrae, basically checking your blind spot. Blind, blind spots, both sides, make sure you check. Every time before you switch lane. Don't trust those blinkers fully. We're gonna do about three of these to each side. We're just moving cautiously through the full range of motion that we can achieve. We're not forcing the neck into any kind of discomforting or painful position. Just a full rotation without turning the rest of the body. We wanna disassociate our shoulders so that it's just the head and neck turning. That was three to each side. Now we're going to go to flexion and extension. Tucking the chin into the collarbones, really tightening that chin up and into the top of your sternum, and then tilting the head back, looking to the ceiling with your mouth closed. And we're going to go down and up one or two more times. Trying to get a stretch at the base of the skull and the top of the neck in this down movement and an obvious stretch in the front of the neck on the upward movement. Last one here. Uh, we'll start slow. Give me some patience here. We'll get to it, I promise. But these neck motions, range of motion in your neck is not to be taken for granted because it does decrease over time. Primarily in this next one, what we know is lateral flexion. Lateral flexion of the spine is really limited with age, with this degeneration that happens through the spine and with what's called stenosis, with postural deviation, that forward head tilt. It's notorious as we age and now that we're becoming more dependent on technology, having our head out in front during this would really change the range of motion. So we've got to try to stack that posture one more to each side. <coughs> Excuse me. And we are Done with lateral flexion and those neck motions. I want you to shrug and press now. We're going to move from the neck to the base of the shoulder, or base of the neck and the top of the shoulder blade. Shoulder blade and collarbone both are active in this motion, rising and active pressing. I want you to squeeze the underside of your armpit, back and front side of your armpit, actively reach toward the ground. Squeeze up and squeeze down 10 times. Full contraction, squeeze at the top. Squeeze at the bottom, and I want some control in maintaining uh, those arms tucked to the side and the underarms squeezing through the transitions as well. Actively developing that shoulder blade posture in the shrug and the press. Very basic movements. Up and down, nice and smooth. And last press down. And release, we're gonna go into a shoulder shrug and roll. And let your elbows be a little bit more soft and loose in this one. Up, around, back, and down. Big exaggerated motions. This is the whole shoulder complex now, the collarbone, the shoulder blade, the upper arm bone. We're gonna keep our belly engaged. Don't let that rolling motion go through the spine. We want just the shoulder blades and arms moving here. And we should start to feel the base of the neck, top of the shoulders activate, 
The smoother and more controlled, the more mind-body connection you have, the more you'll get out of this. Take it back around the other side. We're doing, I don't know, six to 10. Really mindful, 360 degrees of control through those shoulder complexes. That shoulder girdle has lots and lots of different connections and we can move that ball and socket joint 360 degrees. So we've got to make sure we control 360 degrees. Good, we should be starting to fire up here through our shoulders a little bit. And let's take it to our fingers and toes now. The other extremities, working on the digits is going to help improve blood flow, neural health, nutrition delivery, all those things that we need to the farthest points of our body. So you can just see lightly that I got my toes moving and wiggling here. My toes are kind of moving just like my fingers in a randomized haphazard type of pattern. I've got my hands up to help flush fluids down to my elbows. You can raise them even more. We do this for lymphatic drainage exercises and get those hands moving. Now let's get our ankles and our wrists moving. So I'm gonna go into wrist circles. <clears throat> you can have your fingers stretched out. I started with some wrist circles closed, but let's do our wrist circles with fingers stretched out. See if you're able to change directions. It's a little multitasking here. I'm doing the ankle sway side to side in my lower body. Now let's ball up the fist. Continue with those wrist circles. Ankle sway. We're going from medial to lateral edge on one foot and vice versa on the other. Can you take your circles in the same direction at the same time? And then we'll take it back the other direction. Continuing with that lateral sway to warm up the lateral and medial side of the lower leg. Those are called your inverters and everters. It's general terms for the muscle groups because they're inverting and everting the ankle. Woo. Arms start to wake up. Forearms are a little bit more awake. Blood's flowing to the digits. Now let's go into <clears throat> a more of a neuromotor exercise. We'll get to more detailed neuromotor training here soon. But our neuromotor exercise with those ankles in flexion and extension or what's known as dorsiflexion and plantar flexion through the ankle, we're gonna go with what I call the rocking chair calf raise. We're rocking through the bottom of the foot, trying to feel every millimeter of the bottom of that foot. This one certainly has a component of coordination and balance, you'll feel it. That's why you see me using my hands in a counter movement. That counter movement allows me to maintain center of mass, center of gravity a little bit easier, and to maintain control, especially as I shift back through those heels, the back four points of contact on my bottom of my foot are not as equipped for balance as the front two, the back two points of contact on my foot are not equipped. Ah! And then a lot of times you'll feel you shift out of that center of gravity and you have to work to correct it. If you need to step back, step back, no problem. Get right back into it. Same as if you're coming really tall onto those toes, and you go a little bit too far, and all of a sudden you're here on the edge of a cliff, that's okay, just step forward and reset. So as you get going, you can continue this. It's a calf raise. Technically, you're strengthening your lower legs, but you're also strengthening, or not just the calf, the lower leg, but the anterior tibialis, that shin muscle, pulling those toes up in front. Very important for our fall prevention and control of the ankle and foot. Great job. We're gonna move into a different position now. We call it the split stance. We're gonna use it to activate our mind-body connections to our lower body, uh, and we're gonna continue with our upper body movements. So our staggered stance or split stance gives us opportunity to challenge balance. The more narrow you come, the harder it is on your balance. The more wide you are, the easier it's gonna be for balance. So find your appropriate load. As soon as those feet start twitching and making you work a little bit to stay up, you know you're in the right place. If you're working too much and you can't do this, uh, the following exercises, you, then it's too narrow and you need to go wider. Here in this staggered stance now, folks, we're going to suck and tuck. I want to make sure that that pelvic region is engaged and we're not arching our back. So we suck that belly in, tuck the tailbone underneath. And we're gonna start with our hands out to our sides and palms down, doing simple arm circles. If this is a bad flashback to gym class, then I apologize, but this is very effective for activating that 360 degrees around the ball and socket joint of the shoulder, 
around the shoulder blades, up at the top of the shoulders, bottom of the shoulders, front and back, all the way. When you come into this position, make sure you're maintaining that suck and tuck the whole time. As your shoulders get tired, the body will tend to cheat and move. So stay right here. And if you need a little bit more challenge from this, folks, you can take a big split stance, split position, and even a split, slight split squat. The deeper you go in your split squat, the more you're gonna get out of this neuromotor, uh, neuromuscular activation that drill. Probably feeling it already because I've been talking so long, so let's switch sides, switch legs, switch sides, palms come up, pelvic tilt, tucked under, and we're going backwards with it. Backwards with these circles, definitely starting to feel the tension uh, and strength develop through our muscles. Here you'll feel a lot more pull through the chest. You'll get a lot more of a good stretch back of that chest, but it's tougher. It makes the back muscles and shoulder muscles work more. And you'll see that I've gone from my staggered stance with the heel down, which is fine. You start wherever you need to into a staggered stance with the heel up to create that neural overload. I'm just looking to feel this whole time that my front leg is twitching. Woo! I'm also feeling my shoulders screaming at me a little bit. So everything's starting to warm up. We're gonna come back to our standing posture. Suck and tuck, everything's stacked. I want you to go into the high neighbor position. This is the double wave. And we're gonna alternate an overhead reach. First thing I'm gonna do is reach straight to the sky. Just letting that elbow and shoulder guide the motion. What I wanna do when I reach to the sky is make sure that I'm not jamming my, elbow or my shoulder and my shoulder blade up to my ear. It's just elevating the bones and soft tissue of the arm, not so much the full shoulder blade. Let's do one more, just reaching and trying to extend that elbow, trying to get the bicep to the ear, not the shoulder. Same thing, bicep up, not the shoulder. Now we're gonna add a little lateral bend with it. Light lateral bend because now we start connecting that underarm all the way down to our pelvis and the lower back. We're also connecting this lateral line through our rib cage and the soft belly, <coughs> uh, side belly underneath the rib cage there. A little bit more on that lateral bend if you can, if you're safe. We're maintaining our suck and tuck, that active position of our butt and our gut the whole time Oh, let's do one last one on each side. Make sure you get a good stretch in that underarm as well as the side, maybe through the core, the torso, the hips. If you started on one side, try to start on the other. At this point, I'm not sure which side I started on. Shake it loose. We're gonna go into one more of that split stance. Uh, one more exercise on each side from that staggered position. Try to challenge your mind to body connections here, make it a little bit unstable. Uh, let's start with a more simplistic movement, the internal and external rotation from our arms loaded to our side. It's, I say simplistic, it's just not as intense because we don't have a big, long, heavy lever of our arms reaching out here, side or forward. But the reality is, very rarely do we use this internal and external rotation motion isolated in this manner. So squeezing external rotation like I just was, squeezing here is pretty easy. You feel that the chest fires, the underarm fires, keep your arms tucked in, don't let your elbows flare. Compact those arms in, and squeeze the hands together. But squeezing back, that's a little bit weird. Feel it in the back of your armpit and feel those shoulder blades squeeze together. Still compacting that shoulder in, or that upper arm into the rib cage. Keep going for a couple more, really squeeze those muscles tight for maybe two to three seconds. And if your re respiratory rate's coming up, good, mine too. You wanna try to maintain uh, a, a normal breathing pattern through this. Maybe starting to focus on getting a little bit deeper breaths. Maybe trying to breathe through your nose the best you can, because it's really, really healthy for us. The final exercise, we go into that split stance, other side, and we go to an alternating overhead reach. It's like our go-go dance back in the day. Not really. We're actually gonna maintain things a little bit more strict in our posture. I want you to keep your gut tucked in, your rib cage engaged so you're not reaching up through the spine. We're reaching just that arm up. If your arm doesn't come as far up as mine, that's totally fine. We're working on restoring posture and overhead range of motion, which is incredibly important 
for our total health um, and independence as we go. It's super important for any age, especially us desk workers and uh, pretty much everyone because we have a dominant position with our arm to our side all day and this underarm gets short and tight. I'm using both sides actively here. You can see that on the side that's down, I'm also reaching back behind me, trying to maintain good, solid posture the whole time. Let's do one more squeeze each, and our shoulders should be getting a little bit talkative, maybe telling us that they're fatiguing, starting to burn a little bit. That's fine. This is all neuromotor connections, getting stronger, more active, as well as dynamic range of motion, stretching it out and becoming a little bit more primed and ready for some higher intensity activity.